A good moed. Welcome to a special Pesach edition of this year. She should be as chus or fushlema for Meryl Bas Devora and for Yosef Israel ben Chay Michal. So I wanted to explore a chazal about Kriyas Yamsuf. That the second half of Pesach focuses on Kriyas Yamsuf specifically. So there's an interesting Gemara in Psachim Kuf Yud Ches. It says, Kashim is on Osof Adam ke Kriyas Yamsuf that the struggle of Parnassa is compared to Kriyas Yamsuf, and it's something apparently that we're supposed to learn from Kriyas Yamsuf. We're supposed to learn lessons to apply to our own thought process about our Mizonas, about our Parnassa. The Gemara Darshan is in the Pasuk. This is of Shizbi, quotes of Yosef and Isaiah, that the Mizonas of a person is difficult like Kriyas Yamsuf. As it says, Hashem is... No, we say in Tehillim on Shabbos and Yom Tiv, No Sein Lechem Chobasar Kiliyom Chasto, and we say Gozim Sofli Gzorim Kiliyom Chasto. He asked the question, "What's the drasha?" There's many ideas in this in this capital Tehillim of Kiliyom Chasto. So Chachmas Manoach explains that the parts that there's a whole list of things that have to do with the creation of the world, and there's a whole list of things that have to do with Yitzias Mitzrayim. And No Semechobasar is in the Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim section. So we see that it's in that category of miracles and Ashkacha Pratis, not a natural part of the creation of the world, like the rest. So the obvious question on this Chazal is what does it mean? Nothing is difficult for Akarish Baruch. When it says it's difficult, does it mean for Akarish Baruch? Does it mean for us? So the Rashbam explains that it's referring to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and that the same way that Kriyas Yamsuf was a tremendous miracle, so too that giving a person Parnassa is a tremendous miracle. It's not part of the natural course of events, and that's a person should approach it that way, that it's the same challenge in the sense that it's not part of the natural course of events, and a person has to preach its miraculous, and a person has to domin for it, to that degree. And the Gemara in in fact, on Naftala, tells us this idea that the, one of, that the key to Parnassah is in the hands of Hashem. It's not delegated out to one of the Malachim. It seems that as much as Parnassah might seem natural to some of us, that it's a nace from a Kaddish Baruch Hu when a person receives his Parnassah. It's not part of the natural course of events. The al and the Rifan in the Ein Yaakov it's an achron, it's not the rift, the rishon. Explore the Chachmas and Noach explain in similar vein, different from the Rashbam. They explain that it's also Kashav HaKadosh Baruch Hu is because it goes against the Midas Adin, I think is what they mean, because there are many Rishon who are not worthy of, who are not worthy of Kriyas Yamsuf. So that's why it was Kashav HaKadosh Baruch Hu to include them in that miracle. And the same vein, it's, Kasha for Kadosh Baruch Hu to give Mizonos to the Rasham who don't deserve it, is the way the Rif is explaining it, or the Al Sheikh is explaining it, maybe for us when we don't deserve it, that that's what the Kasha is. The Kasha has to do with realizing that we're, that the sense that we're undeserving of the Chesed that we're receiving. But the Chavetz Chaim, in the Sefer Chavetz Chaim Al Torah and Parshas B'Shalach, the footnote brings down that he had a different chat in this Chazal. He said it's Kasha. For the person. Then it's kosher in the sense that we do our established and there's nothing more we could do. By Kriyas Yamsuf, Hashem told Moshe, you're going to tell them to march in, you're going to raise up your hand, and they're going to, the seas going to split. And it was very challenging. And the people, Nachshem ben Minodav was the one who jumped in up to his neck before the sea split. And that was the only established. They did their established. And they were relying on a miracle. And he says that's the same word. If Kashim is no Shodom, it's just as difficult for a person because he's doing his Ishtadlus, but there's nothing more than that than he can do. He doesn't have any more control of it than that. So in a sense, Hashem is trying to give us a perspective, how little control we have, how we're supposed to view it, that we have such little control and be totally botech by Hashem, and it's all Ishtadlus. Quotes that there's another Pasuk that he was ruggled to explain. Pasuk tells us, Hashem Throw your burden on Hashem and he'll sustain you. And the Chavetz Chaim used to give a mashal. If a poor person is walking with his sack of, let's say, 10 pounds and 3 ounces of whatever it is he's carrying. And a poor person's riding by in a car and a poor person, and the rich person says, Do you want me to take a few? And he says, Sure. Thank you very much. Gives him the 10 pounds. Holds on to the 3 ounces. The rich guy's looking at him. 
You think I'm, you want to trust me to carry the 10 pounds. Why wouldn't you trust me with the last three ounces? And similar idea, you think I'm not going to carry the whole thing? And that's sort of how a Kodesh Baruch looks at us. Person is to modernize his nimshal. Person comes, you know, what's your plan for Parnassa? Well, or, or, you know, I'm going to be in Koyo for a couple of years. I'm going to be in, uh, or I'm going to go to college and get this degree. Okay, and what's your plan for buying a house? What's your plan for retirement? It's a shim, it'll, uh, I'll do the right things and things will work out. It's the way the world... And the person is being boteach down the road. So Hashem is looking at the person. So Chavetz Chaim says, you're boteach in Hashem for the next 70 years. These first t- 5, 10 years, you think you have figured out? So why don't you be boteach in Hashem for these 5, 10 years too? Not meaning that a person shouldn't work, but that the perspective is that you're in control by a Kodesh Baruch Hu and you're being boteach in a Kodesh Baruch Hu for these 5, 10 years as well. I think it's maybe one of the reasons, you know, in America there's a certain sense I get a degree and I'll get my job and I'll be able to have a natural means of Parnassa. And right now, the housing market, it's uh, very difficult, very, very scary for a young couple to think they're ever going to be able to buy a house. And Shem's way of showing us that, reminding us we have to be botech in him, that even if you're going to get a good job, make $100,000, $200,000 a year, it's going to be, there's a lot that you need to be botech in a Kodesh Baruch Hu. It gives us that sense of reminder. Chavetz Chaim takes us in an interesting direction. His main point was to talk about the idea that if a Kodesh Baruch Hu gave Klai Yisrael the mon, then Hashem, 600,000 people, or really 3 million people, that Hashem is sustaining them in the desert, then a Kodesh Baruch Hu can probably sustain you too, and you shouldn't be violating your the Das Torah and the Das Yisrael to make your Parnasa. And I guess... In today's society, it's a very sensitive topic about when, what types of programs should a person do to obtain a, what types of work environments should a person work in. Very complex topic. Every person needs their own Das Torah. And my yeshiva's ashkafa is that numbers have to make sense. There has to be a P that on our madrig of bitachon. There has to be a al derech a way that a person is going to be able to to pay the bills. That at the same time, when a person's, there's a sense of bitachon, and when the more bitachon a person has, the more they can, the more their hishtadwas can change even. And a person, how is he going to follow his dreams if he doesn't have any bitachon? That the only thing I could do is do XYZ career, it's going to make this and this amount of money, I'll be there at heaven. A person has to be able to tap into that reservoir of bitachon, realize it's all hishtadwas, and that I think we have to have a certain perspective that. There has to be a certain sense of trusting in HaKadosh Baruch Hu. I'll give an example of somebody I was talking with. He signed up to be an accountant. He's planning. He's miserable. He's going to have to go work for one of the big four firms. And he's ter- he's miserable about the nature of the work, about the environment he's going to sign up for, about what it's going to do for his learning, his family. So why is he doing it? Yeah, that's that's his status. If, you know, the best job on the track that's the easiest on paper makes the most sense is to go for accounting. And that's the... That's the best Hishtadwas is to do the big fours. I said, at least give Hashem a chance to make you happy first. You know, there are people that make up on us without doing that. You know, basically, I mean, you do it for fun. You do the, a different track and it doesn't work out and then you end up someplace you hate. But start off with Chetchi, where somebody's going to be miserable. At least give Hashem a chance to make you happy doing your Hishtadwas that you'd be happier doing. If a person wants to work for the big four, that's something else. I'm not saying not. I'm saying that if a person thinks that he's going to be miserable doing it, or any other career, any other job, and then you should at least have be able to tap into the bitachon that HaKadosh Baruch Hu could give him a parnasa in a way that he doesn't have to be miserable. A person shouldn't feel that he has to sign up for a life of misery in order to make a parnasa. A person has to do it with the proper hashkafa and the proper das Torah, but this is really the point that Chavetz Chaim is saying one of the ideas we could take out from Kriyas Yamsuf is this sense that the Parnassah is Biyad HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and the more we could see it that way, that it's oh, everything we're doing is Ishtadwus, the more we can benefit from that Bitochon in terms of ourselves and in terms of the type of Ishtadwus we'll have to do. Have a wonderful Yamsuf. HaKadosh Baruch